and we have our error with the red exclamation. Okay. So I think that's looking pretty good. Now, one other place where it breaks, and I want to try and just really cement this into your thinking of how you structure your code. I like to step things out. Now, in the first instance, we use target as a game object. Let's, let's just create another variable. Uh, my target transform. So it looks like we're going to be storing a reference to the transform. So let's typecast that as transform. Okay, so we've been there, we've had a look at that. So now my target dot sorry my target transform because we're going to assign to the variable, we're going to populate it. Let's just even comment this out too. We're just working with this. I just want to prove a point. My target transform equals gain object dot find and the same thing. We're going to look for something that doesn't exist. Now look, let's look for a seashell. Now let's look for a banana. Okay, we're looking for a game object that is named banana. Okay, but we're trying to store its transform. So we found the game object, or we think we have, and then we want to access the transform. But just in that one line there, I've tried to do two things at once. I've tried to find a game object, and then I'm trying to access its transform component. So let's save that out. Back to Unity, and I've done it again, I left things playing. So of course that was on the previous run. Stop, clear, reset. If we had a compilation error, it would still be there, it wouldn't disappear. So let's just hit play and see what happens now. Immediately, we have the null reference exception. Now when we did this and it was just a game object, it didn't happen. So why are we now getting a null reference exception? That's because, as I was trying to show, we're trying to do two things at once. We're assuming that this has happened. So again, the null reference exception is saying, saying, no, I can't do this part. I can't do this part because this doesn't exist. So you should always break this kind of thing up. So just say we wanted to use a transform, but we don't want to store our game object. That's a waste of time for us. So what you do is just split it up. This is what wrong. It's not entirely wrong, but you can see how it breaks. And that's all about smart scripting. We've got to try and outthink our own scripts. We've got to see from every angle where it can break. And we're going to make sure it's not going to happen. So let's create a local variable, something that we're just going to use instantly once, and then it's a throwaway. So a variable, the well, it's the game object bit. <laughs> so the game object bit will be of type game object. And that's going to equal what we're trying to find. See, so we're splitting this up. We're going to do one part at a time. We don't want to keep this forever. We just want to grab the transform. But we want to make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen. So just split it up. Game object if we find, and then we can do what we were trying to do before. Target transform equals. Now we have a reference to this game object. We just stored it in this local variable. So we want to get our game object bit, and we want to get the dot transform. Okay, so those two lines are doing exactly the same thing as this one line. All we've done is we split it up. We split it right there. We're going to do this part first, here, and then we're going to do this part here. Save that out. Go back to Unity, and I've done it again. Okay, stop the scene, clear. There are no compilation errors. 
hit play. Now of course, yep, we accept the same null reference because we've just written the same line in a different way. So let's pause, make sure I stop it, double click, and it's highlighting where it's gone wrong. And that just proves my point. In this above example, this bit doesn't happen. This is where we get the null reference exception. I just want to reference this. So this is where we employ the kind of check that we have down here. This is where we can make it smart. If we break it up. See, so we've broken it up. Now we can ask if... What are we asking? We're asking... If that game object we just found and the variable is not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, then we're going to grab its transform component. Else. And we just put the else in so we can see for ourselves. Now let's keep it a warning because we can see that's a little bit different from the error. A long morning. No, no banana. <laughs> no banana film. <laughs> okay, let's see that happen. Oh, you got to make yourself happy. Okay, that was the error from the last go. So we clear that. No compilation errors. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we got rid of that null reference exception because we kind of looked after that. We made a check to see if that returned a null or not. And from our warning here, our check worked. Alright, so I've tried to step this out. Hopefully I've shown you a little bit about how we can use game object and also where it breaks and where these null reference exception errors come from. Now I do want to show you one other little trick. Let's just pop it down here. Now, if you remember, we had a variable, and we're going to type cast it as a boolean. Um, equals false. Okay, so if we had a boolean, and then we wanted to check if that was true or false, we could say if. I always type brackets out first. So. I showed you how we could say if my boolean is equal to true then I showed that this is the same thing let's just pop it down here this is how I did it last time saying this is exactly the same as just saying if my boolean because our conditional is looking for a true or false right so those two lines mean exactly the same thing. And similarly, if my boolean is equal to false. And I also showed you that writing that was the same as writing it like this. If not my boolean. If my boolean is equal to false. Okay, so that was a way of shortening that down and that's how you'll see it in most scripts that's how I explained it now what am I trying to get at see how I've got if game object is not equal to null let's just start again if let's just do the true false exactly like I did just then with booleans if game object is equal to null so it doesn't exist now just like the boolean example, this is where I have confused things. Okay, I'm just going to keep going instead of going back and just confusing people. If we're saying this is equal to null, it's kind of like saying, kind of like saying. Game object bit is equal to false. Okay, so if we're saying is something equal to null, we're kind of like saying is it false? Now, if we look at our Boolean example, 
we have the not here. So now, to write exactly the same line as there, we can say not. Alright? So this line here is equal to null, is exactly the same. It's saying if not game object bit, if we didn't find a game object, if this game object bit is a null. Okay, so what's the other side of the coin? If so, if we say the game object bit is not equal to null, this is like saying game object bit is equal to true. Okay, so we're saying it's not equal to null. This isn't a null. There is something in there. Okay, so the other way of saying that, probably worked it out yourself already. If game object bit, okay, if game object bit is true, we have that game object bit. I just wanted to show that because you will see this when you're reading other people's scripts too. It'll be this shorthand version, it won't explain it out like that, even especially with the Booleans. Alright, so let's just even save that. Playing again. It's compiling, it's compiling. See, there's no errors. There's our warning. But there's no errors. So everything I've shown you is correct syntax. It's working syntax. It's working computer language. The computer and the compilation of the code, it understands these commands because they're all saying the same thing. Alright, so I'm going to leave that there for a second. Absorb that. And that is game object find. That's what it's all about.